Action, action, action activate! activate. You caught me barking out loud with laughter at this comic. And speaking of barking, here comes my co-host. It was just me barking at my now third turtle cover for this that I'm very excited about. It's us. It's Action Activate. Good We're day. here for another comic review. For all Did five you of you in the audience, the comic welcome. tropes uh, homage intro? I was wondering if it was a comic tropes one. I'm glad you called it out. Shout out yeah. to, to that channel. That's a, a really good one that I, I listen to frequently same um yeah uh we both have different covers you have maintained consistency i got the first one which is part of the multi-cover i yeah. forget what the second one was but it wasn't that and this is just the one that they had one copy of that i got yeah. so i have not i like this cover actually if i saw yours in mine i would choose mine but i'm not collecting those the way you are true um, but i like and we've talked about this before the casey suit it's really grown on me like i think that's really cool looking and i don't yeah. know if it's just familiarity, if the drawing has like, I want to kind of go back and look at issue one, like the way it was drawn or what. Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I think like to me, this issue especially, and we'll formally dive in in a sec. I feel like it gave this thing that uh, it reminded me of in uh, the new Ant Man movie. For those who have seen it, where I kind of appreciate the suit a little bit more when they're not wearing the helmet, but then also when they're wearing the helmet. So when I get to see both so frequently, I'm like, ah, I appreciate it in this different kind of situation. Okay. All right. Um, but well, this is issue three of the second Power Rangers Turtle crossover, for those that don't know. Yeah. The one that is currently on the shelves as of March 2023. This is like, I think, like, it came out last week. Yeah. Um, Thoughts? Continue to enjoy it. Same. Uh, there, There's more good than bad, as always. There's a couple nitpicks I have. Uh, not as much as some of the other issues I've done. And there's a lot of fun fan service moments, which could be said of every issue, but like I was yes. really noticing it in this one. Yeah, I think uh, so. The big hook of this issue was unfortunately spoiled for us, like when the series was released, yeah. which is uh, that the Rangers morph into mutants. But once again, Ryan Parrott does it in a way where you're like, that makes perfect sense. Yes. Uh, well, well, two things. One, I I knew this was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen in this issue mm -hmm. because I know it's a cover, I'm guessing, of the next issue. So I thought that would be the issue where it happened. And in the beginning, they were talking about that, you know, they lost their connection to the morphing grid and then yep. you can't tap directly into it. It'd be crazy. And I'm like, oh, this is setting up what's going to happen next issue. With, but like, no, they just went for it. Um, I don't know. I, I, okay. I, this is not me criticizing writing because I don't know if there's a way you could do this where it would make sense. Um, he explained it. He gave lines of dialogue and 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 explanations so that you're not like, how did that happen? But it was basically like the 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 coins can't connect to the morphing grid anymore. But the coins still work, but it's like such raw power, you need like a diffuser through it. And it's like, oh well, Billy and Donnie have been talking. And what if we like kind of add mutagen to it? That worked. That makes no sense. They didn't really explain it. it it's fine. I'm not like criticizing it. Like that was bad. Like it was just like, sure fine mutagen and power that makes this happen it made it sense to me because mutagen is such a macguffin well this is what i'm saying it's it wasn't it was not bad writing at all but it wasn't like a masterful stroke of i cracked the case and like he just said hey i'm writing power rangers in the turtles universe throw mutagen on a coin and that's what happens and i'm fine with that but when i read it i was like that's ridiculous in a way i enjoy but it's it wasn't like yeah it wasn't like when they figured out why yellow didn't work for the green lantern ring and took a silly thing and made it serious it was taking a silly thing and mixing it with another silly thing to get something awesome <laughs> and, the, and I, that's fine the thing i appreciated about it was when the rangers did turn into mutants some of them had moments where they were really excited but also like they've already been like transforming superheroes before so it was kind of yeah. just they went into it like yeah for sure like it wasn't 
surprise, which I also appreciated. It wasn't like, mm. look at these brand new things. It was like my favorite moment from it. Uh, there were actually two was uh, when they were talking to Jason. It was like, how you doing? He's like, I'm doing awesome. I really thought I was going to have two tiny arms. Yeah, and, but he, yeah, but he was willing. He's like, well, if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. Yeah. Um, but I also like that you're right. None of them were like super phased by the fact they have different abilities in a new form, but many of them complained about like, I don't know how to use, I don't know how to punch with these tusks and, and Kimberly, the pterodactyl couldn't fly. I thought that was great. Yeah. Cause like, yeah, I have these wings, but like, it's like giving someone a motorcycle. You don't know how to drive it, you know? Yeah. Like, so uh, I thought that was, that was cool that they weren't all just uber powerful in these new forms. Like they could punch and stuff, but they weren't like ninjas. Yeah. It, it, I know that's a thing we've talked about in, in the show Power Rangers where somebody gets powers, instantly know how to use them. And Marshall, yeah. actually with Mystic Force currently that we're watching, we've mm -hmm. talked about that a lot. And this was a good thing of like, yeah, I'm a big dinosaur, so I guess I use my tail and I'm kind of strong in this. But yeah. like, I don't know how to fly. I, I know with Tommy, he's like, can you breathe fire? He's like, oh, I hope I can. That would be right. so great. <laughs> yeah. And that was another case where I saw Tommy turn into dragon and I'm like, how... Like I, I like, and I thought to myself, like, oh, did they use like iguana or like like something similar to like? And then like, I think Leo or somebody was like, hey, are you, you dragons aren't real? And he's like, I know. He's like, so how? He's like, Morphin Grid Man. I I stopped yep. trying to figure that out. And Leo's like, yeah, I'm the same way with Mutagen. And that reinforces the setup he did. It's sort of like a sideways. Hey, I know this is ridiculous, guys, but what do you want me to do? You know, yeah. <laughs> like so exactly. Yeah. Um, other thing that we saw in the last issue was oh, yeah. Shredder working with them and Shredder. I, I love everything he's involved in. They're like, we don't trust him. He's like, you shouldn't, I yeah. wanted to enslave all of you, but like yeah. right now I'm being real petty and I want to be the man in charge. And we yeah. both happen to want to take out the same people. So let's do it. And I feel like that's a, a, a trope we've seen on occasion in various media where there's like, yeah. I want to take over the world. It's like, it's like a Dr. Doom thing. Like, like, you know, you know, I'm not going to stand here and let the Beyonder come in and take over. I'm, I'll team up with you, Fantastic Four, Avengers, whoever, because this is my planet and I'm yeah. going to rule it. But if, you know, and so like, I always like when it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, like that absolutely makes sense. Or it's um, like, they want to destroy the earth and I want to rule the earth. So I'm not going to let them destroy it. And I'm confident that when this is over, I could defeat you stupid superheroes or yeah. turtles or whatever. Like, I'm not worried about that. Um. I also, I like this panel right here a lot. This is when they're kind of like, what are we going to do? And Shredder is just like above them figuratively and literally he's got his cape flowing and he's literally like, you're idiots. I'm here to save you. And he just starts giving orders like robot saves order on you two with me. And they're like, all right. You know, cause like, like yeah. Darth Vader starts giving you orders. He does know what he's doing, you know? Like, yeah. Like uh, part of me and this, I attribute to good writing part of me really wanted to see the three of them fight together. And the other part of me also appreciates that we didn't because we see right. shredder be like, we're about to go. And yeah. then we don't see the fight. And then after, I don't know if you noticed, but like they come back, they're like actually shredders with us. And like Tommy has blood, like coming from the top of his head. I did notice that, but I, I you think shredder got him? No, I think like in the fight, because in the fight, they're on the, they lose yeah. their powers, but they right. keep fighting. Yes. So I think Tommy just like, you know, got hit in the head, is bleeding, but still fighting. I, that's what I thought happened too. I didn't think it was Shredder, but yeah, I, I like they showed the damage. And he could have even had that cut under the helmet, but like, you know, now we see it. Um, I also like the, the new Krang body, which is like very Iron, Iron Man, but it still has like the little tuning fork on the head. It still kind of looks like the old cartoon one, similar to the rock soldiers and the putties where they look just like coolified, but not like so distant that you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. To me, like I saw him damn more a draw an Iron Man helmet and then just take the jaw off of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I see what you're saying, but he still has the tuning fork in the glasses and I can kind of see it, but I, no, I, I, now that you've said it, I see it. And and the abdomen, like it has that like Mark, whatever abdomen. Yeah. But, uh, to, yeah. so here, here's my conspiracy theory about it. Yeah. I think if Dan Mora was left to his own devices, he would make a cooler one that we both would like. I think they went, this needs to translate. So here are your parameters. And they kind of kit bashed a Marvel legend and he went, okay. And then do it. <laughs> I, I got no problem with that. I, you know what I actually really like about it more than anything I realized as I'm looking at now? He's not in the stomach. 
He's on the yeah, chest. Yeah, he's in the chest. And being on the chest makes him eye level with other characters instead of like, yeah, that makes so much more sense. Actually, above eye level. Here he is next to Rita, and he's towering above her, which again, you're this megalomaniacal person that rules a dimension. You're not going to want to look up at people, so that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, every bit of that I liked. Um, I didn't notice this until just now, but these are the scenes with Shredder talking to the turtles. Look how bright Mikey is. But yeah. like they're in the sewers, everything's shaded. And then even over here, Leo talking to Shredder, it's hard to see. Shredder is just always in shadow. He's got tons of hatching. He just and like, yeah, they're in the sewers, but he is in more shadow than anyone else. And I feel like that's on purpose. Like, yes, it's not to show that he's in darkness, it's to show that he is a dark character. Yeah. Even standing next to these other people in darkness, he's the darkest. I think I think that's a really cool little one. Uh one shout out I wanted to give to the writing as well. So um they lose their powers they kind of go into hiding for a couple days yeah. in that time dimension x rita forces pretty much enslaved the whole city yeah they got it um and then they have april go in as kind of their inside person and they're like i don't like you going alone she's like i have two people with me and they know the ins and outs of angel grove so we're All fine hiding and spots yes and i'm like thank you yeah. for making bulk and school not yeah. the butt of a joke they're and actual yeah. And, and it's it, they're not the butt of the joke, but it's consistent because, like, yeah, they're not heroes, but they know all the hiding spots. They do. That makes yeah. sense, you know. So yeah, yeah. The two the two greatest things I think the comics have done for Bulk and Skull is, um, honestly, like in some recent runs in this of having them like again not be heroic but be useful and show yeah. why they're there, but also you know going way back. Um, showing the alternate coinless universe where Bulk's yeah. just a straight up soldier now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and Skull is essentially a Power Ranger. Yeah, I yeah I forgot about that, but yeah, like everything about it, I'm uh, I'm a big fan of. And again, like this issue wasn't my favorite out of all of them. I want to say I'd have to go back and watch our reviews. Can't remember if I liked issue two more than one, but I loved both those. And this I one I really I, like. I think I liked two better. Um, this one, yeah, this one is, they're all good. I mean, it's, yes. it, it's, but this one had some really nice moments, but mm -hmm. it wasn't like a hundred percent all the way through. Yeah. Um, for, I don't know why, but I really like this panel of splinter the way they did his, whisper, yeah, just in pure white. And he's looking like, I, I just, it, it, it popped. Dude, Dan Mora is a God of comics. Yeah. Like he's yeah. so good. Yeah. It, this makes me really want to read. Uh, he recently did the world's finest series and I've heard right. nothing but good things about it. And half of it is because he is the artist on all of the issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, okay. So then we get to the, where Leo is like, okay, it's time for more. It's morphin time. And then Jason's like, no, it's mutating time, which again is cheesy and dumb in the perfect way. And I love and how they start here and yes. end here. Yeah. That's almost like the little morphs we were making up. Well, uh, that in jungle fury. Oh Yeah. But I was also Jungle trying to be what I was spirit unleashed. Isn't that yeah. what it is? I, well, it's, I, the one I learned was uh, for RJ, so it's different. Yeah, right? wasn't it? They're all. Yeah, Jungle yeah. Beast. I'm not going to pretend to remember it now. There's a, there's a I, a, a, I remember when we watched it. I tried to remember them so I could do them, it's like not, at Morphicon. It's not like you know. It's, it's six smooth. years ago, in case you were wondering. Yeah. Um, but then they yeah they slide it down and. I guess they're still holding the morpher and then there's little wires that have mutagen going to the morpher, I guess is what that's supposed to be. Or is it a whole different device? Yeah. I was unclear. I guess they kind of do this and then now the mutagen's like in me or something. I, yeah. Either way um, I was down with it. Yeah. I, I, I liked also, a different pose. What? I liked a different pose. That was what yes. I took from it. I like, um, they have the patterns of their suits. Like, in in their flesh or fur or whatever yeah. which is a little silly but the if the idea is that that's how the powers manifest normally anyway it's like fine and it, it's like softened a little bit like especially yeah. with like like on this picture of, of trini of trini yes yeah. i thought the same thing I, I, I like when it's not so sharp edged but it actually looks more organic um so uh, one question i have for you in terms of them being mutants mm -hmm. who is your favorite designed mutant ranger uh like looking at it as if they were ninja turtle characters or yes. just... like knowing the background right. but having them be ninja turtle characters who do you think is the best design okay. i will say it's definitely not jason yeah um, agree. going with what he said he looks like a strong guy with a tyrannosaurus head so not mm -hmm. him i like i like billy a lot 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like that's because I've seen a Triceraton. So it's yeah, already he's kind of, very much Triceraton. It's already like a pre-designed design. So I'm going to disqualify him because it's sort of already been done. That is fair. Um, personally, I don't like Zach, but I'm not a big fan of Wooly Mammoths. So it's not that it's a bad design, but that's just like like in Godzilla, the new God, legendary Godzilla, there was like a Wooly Mammoth Kaiju. And I'm like, who cares? Yeah. Like, I just not with arms. It. Yes. Um, Trini uh, is good, but very basic. She's just like like werewolf but with a cat. So it really comes down to, I'm leaning towards Kimberly. No, you know what? I'll give it to Tommy, the, the, the dragon, because it's so ridiculous and it's not even necessarily like a real animal. Like, yeah, I'll give it to Tommy. I was going to say Tommy, but I think a lot of that is personal bias. I actually think they did a good job proportionally on Kimberly. So I'm going to say Kimberly for the sake of argument. That, I mean, that but was, was the same those, top two. Yeah. And, it, and again, like, like, objectively billy might be the best but i like well that's the thing billy and trini are both good they're just things i've seen before so i'm yeah. not yeah you know. but yeah kimberly is really good and and um but i think he's so weird and over the top and like yeah. but also kind of looks like the dragon's word a little bit and yeah. like so that may that feels yeah, he very the gold fin on top if you that's look in the later scene i can see it right here well they they do a better close-up of it when oh. he's fighting i think with leo yeah. Uh, actually, oh, there's one shot right here. I think yeah. See that? So the one thing I also liked in terms of like you know, I I wouldn't even call it fan service. I, it's just a thing that makes sense that you don't think of. Is Splinter comes out and he wrecks a couple putties really quick, and I yeah. think it's Leo or Mikey or somebody is like Master, like what are you doing out here? He's like. Many years ago, there were four turtles who needed, or there were four mutants who needed my help and something, something. And he's like, and I'm doing it again today. Yeah. And it comes right after Kimberly's like, I don't know how to fly. And so it's like, okay, here I am. Yeah. It, and it's cool. It's one of those things where like, even in the turtle, like, like whatever version of turtles, it's always like, you know, Splinter's awesome. And occasionally he'll like be teaching a class with them and show them, but he doesn't get involved in fights because he's older and he's like responsible for everybody and he's not you know he's but it's that thing of like look i can't really get involved and like i could have a heart attack but i know so much that i could like wreck people as you know for like easily but yeah. it's just, he's like a glass cannon is how i think of it like yeah. as long as nobody gets a hit on him he's gonna just wreck everybody but it, one solid hit and he could be dead you know like, yeah yeah um i i felt like the more we talk about this issue the more it was very much a turtle heavy issue as opposed to a ranger heavy issue. And the, the other right. two, I feel like were more balanced, but this one's like, I have a feeling this is more turtle centric and next one might be more ranger centric, but who knows? Well, I mean the end of the issue, they split up and the turtles with shredder go into dimension X yep. attack home base there. And the mutated rangers and splinter stay behind to fight the, the so I hope they split the issue because I th- it's five issues total, right? Yeah, they're five gonna, or six. It's five. It says it on the cover. Three of five. Oh, so it oh. if, it, if it was a six issue thing, then I'd say one issue in Dimension X, one issue on Earth, then finale. But it's going to have to be split. Next issue is going to be split between the two adventures and then finale. Um, which yeah, it'd be nice if it was six issues. But the the one thing I'm a little disappointed, not hugely disappointed, is I like that it's going to be Splinter with the Rangers. I wish somehow it could be Zordon with the Turtles. It could be a thing. You don't know. I don't know, but they're setting it up right now where there was Shredder, which well, is weird and like, oh, it's Shredder, but it's he's from their story, so it's not as weird, you know. But they also sent away Zordon, and they just yeah. said like, yeah, they're like, oh, we got Zordon out somewhere. But Hunter said like, if he could speak, he would like agree with me. Blah, blah. So the impression I got is that like his mind is saved in this container, but it's not like he's able to talk or interact or anything. It's just like a backup of his personality. But it could be a thing too, where like it got sent, and because they corrupted the command center, it's like, oh, he's in Dimension X now too. Whoops. I mean, yeah, if they, and that would be great if, with using Dimension X technology, he shows up as like a hard light hologram or some kind of like I'm here physically and pulls a splinter where he's like, let me just wreck these people real quick, and then I'll get back in my container. All right, all right. Now I'm gonna be disappointed when that doesn't happen. Yeah, I know. Um, also, um, we finally see, which I was very hopeful for. Um, Casey kind of comes out and he's like, look, I'm your inside guy. Yeah. I had to do a lot of bad stuff for them to trust me, but I didn't give them exactly what they wanted. And like, you know, let's do, do this homies. Yeah. Greater good kind of scenario. Yeah. Oh, uh, 
and that is pretty much it. But going back, you just reminded me, uh, I was talking about before, about the shading of, of Shredder. Every now and then, I like to be reminded how small the turtles are. Yeah. They're shorter than an average human. So you have Leo here, and he's going to fight Shredder, but, like, yeah, they're, they're small. And, like, a lot of people forget that, even me sometimes. But I feel like in the original cartoons and, and, and the original comics and stuff, it was really clear and then over time that's sort of been blurred where like you know well, it's very much what i would call the wolverine effect wolverine yeah. in the comics is like five three yes and he's very beefy but he's not a tall dude and that's part and of then, what's awesome is he's this little guy that like just wreck people yeah and then the movie came out and they're like oh this six two very good looking chiseled man is wolverine and that, then wolverine over time got made a little bit bigger and a little know, bit in bigger the first movie or two they tried to make him look short like they had the other actors standing on boxes around him and things like that. And then after a while, they're like, you know what? Fine. He's just tall. Who cares? You know? <laughs> yeah. No one brought it up. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, that's uh we jumped jumped around a lot, but this is a good issue. Yes. I would put it, I'd give it a B plus. That would be my objective rating for it. I don't remember how we rated the others. I'm gonna I don't it, either. I'm gonna just give it a thumbs up. There we go. Uh, all three issues are good. I, you know, I recommend all three of them. I, I definitely like it more than the first series. I enjoyed the first series, but oh, every, every issue of this, I enjoyed more than the first series. Yeah. And it's a thing too. like, part of this is because they established that the two universes kind of have melded, but mm -hmm. the other is just like, I don't know, again, nothing against the first series. There's just some about this one where like different beats are hidden. Uh, all I will say is if you haven't read the series yet, you, you can jump walking. in like us, <laughs> or you could wait probably like four or five months and then get it in a trade. I think it's gonna be more than that because we got almost a month till issue four, so we got about two months till they're all out. You think a trade's gonna come out two months after the series? Maybe you could wait. Yeah, I mean, you could you could certainly wait, or you could get the trade of the first one while you're waiting for the second. Exactly. Yeah, like this reads really well as a like cohesive all the way through story. The only downside is like. I just want to keep reading it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you, you talked to Ryan Parrott at a convention who basically said that he would be willing to do it more if they want him to do more. Yeah. Ryan <laughs> Parrott. I was just talking about him the other day. Um, he's just a guy who I love his mantra for comics of, I like writing about things that I like and want to see. And it just so happens. Other people want to see it too. That's perfect. I mean, that's yeah, that's great. That's the dream. Um, but yeah, so that is uh that's been about it for this. What were you I was say? just I was just gonna say because uh, I've been working on my turtle display collection, as you know. Um, and I was I, I don't know what I was gonna say, but then I saw my last Ronin figure and I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe as another little supplemental side thing, we could do the last Ronin. But then I'm like, wait, that's already done. But then there's the lost years. I'm like, wait, that has nothing to do with Power Rangers. <laughs> I forgot that this is a like power ranger, and we could still do it, but like it's a tenuous thread of it like can if 15 this? individual people said that they want us to review the last Ronin or the last Ronin lost years, we will do it. I agree. And that will never happen. Yep. That will never happen. But I would. Yeah. Um, all right. But that was good. We'll do the rest of this series, of course. And um, Ninja Storm episodes. Uh, Ninja, Ninja Storm. Mystic, Mystic Force. Mystic Force. Still going. Uh, and uh, yeah. But until next time, I've been Gazbot. Still the big dog. And to the power. See. 15, bow, bow, bow. It's 15 individual people. I noticed how you said that, so it can be one person that spammed like 15 comments. Like, I did it. I mean, if somebody wants to make 15 murder accounts, I mean, we have to acknowledge Oh, that's the effort, fine. It, that's a lot of effort. Yeah. Dude, I still haven't finished Last Ronin, actually. Have you? I know from one issue off. <laughs> I think I'm two issues off. Yeah, I, uh,. I need to sit down and finish that one. I've been close. I've been I close, need to but... finish it and start the Lost Years because they are coming out with more figures, including figures for the Lost Years, and I got to know if I want to have them. Same. Uh, I mean, I'll just get them, but like, I mean, I, well, I guess it helps. That's to what know. I've done, which is why I have like several boxes of turtle figures that I now need to sell because I was just getting anything I thought I might want. And I'm like, that's not a bad. Oh, I know I want it. It's just, you know. <laughs> Bye. Oh, it didn't work. Now. <laughs>